Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of this beautiful scene of Yellowstone. Um, if you want to learn how to create beautiful misty hills, this is a tutorial for you. Stay tuned, uh, don't go anywhere. Get your brushes ready, I'll be right back for part two. Okay, here we go. I'm focusing on this mountain next, okay? And I've zoomed in there now, and I've zoomed in on the reference photograph as well. I hope you don't mind, all right? Uh, it should be around there. Um, so, I am going to take my medium stubby, I think. Let me just think about this now for a moment. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I think i go with my medium stubby for this. Uh, it should be okay. If it's not, we can move to our large stubby, all right? Now, you can see there's a nice light kind of hitting the mountain just here and there, isn't there? So I'm going to try and create that. First of all, I'm going to just stamp on my brush with some turpentine, okay? Just regular turpentine. A little drop of linseed oil in that as well. Um, I don't know, do I need to put a little bit of linseed oil on this area? We could paint without the linseed oil and just see, because the canvas is kind of quite dry as well. Now, also, another quick tip that I got from one of my very good followers and friends is um, the centre of the canvas, the centre bare in the stretched canvas was causing problems because the timber behind the canvas was showing through. So there was this kind of line coming down on the paint um, on a previous tutorial. So a good tip which I got from someone was put a sheet of cardboard in behind the canvas, directly behind the canvas, behind and in front of this timber strut on the canvas and that stops any lines forming then as you're painting you see very very good tip thank you very much for that now let's carry on i have my palette here okay and i'll try and show you my mixing now as i'm going along all right i hope you don't mind um so what i'll do i'll zoom back slightly so you can see the palette a little bit better okay just a little there now i think that's a little bit better i can keep my palette up here then you see yes Oh, let me just tighten this camera a little. Um, now, I am going to take some cobalt blue. And this is my palette which I used from the last time, okay? So I keep the very same palette. I think it makes things easier. Little crimson. And little dab of white. Now, you're going to want a good bit of thinners in this because we have a nice big area to paint. So let's put plenty of thinners in this. Cobalt blue, some crimson, and a little white. Now the white does make it very light and sort of pasty. Uh, let's take a bit more cobalt in that. I'm going to put this colour now, looking at the reference photograph, I think down this side of the hill. And I'm going to leave this dark one in front, just for now. Now that's kind of actually going on not bad, it's quite nice. And I'm going to darken it just as it gets up to the top here, there's kind of a dark ridge. It's quite dark, so I'll take a little, let me just hold my palette like this, so you can see much better, yes? Um, I'll take a little crimson and a little cobalt, and there's a slightly darker line up there, that's a little bit better. Now, I can still make out the pencil line on this very only just okay it goes up to kind of a point up here then it gets bright and it kind of comes over sticks out a little and again look it doesn't have to be perfect but i want to try and keep it near enough do you understand you know what i mean don't you you want to try and keep it as close as possible to the reference photograph i think for this tutorial i would like to um, but again, you can make it your own should you wish to, alright? Now, put a bit of that little warm colour in there as well. Notice I'm, my brush strokes are going up and down to follow the direction of the hill, yes? Now, as it comes along this side here, I should go up there really all the way, shouldn't I? Now, as it comes around, it does get a lot more pinky here, doesn't it? On the right hand side. So I'm taking a little bit more crimson 
and I may take a hint of burnt umber as well. So it's kind of a pinky, browny sort of a colour, and I'm mixing that in with the blue as well. Look, a little bit of blue going in there, and let's take another hint of cobalt in this, and let's come down this side of the hill. Uh, okay, let's just go for it. I'm going to try just to get it as close as I can, okay? Then it kind of takes out a little bit and comes back down. Okay, I will leave it at that. I'm going to come across here like that. Fill this in. So it's kind of quite wet, but it's not very, very wet. I'm just using little amounts of paint, okay? My mixes are very, very thin. Um, some oil painters prefer to put loads of paint on, loads and loads and loads of paint. But I find you doing it like that makes it very difficult to control the paint on your canvas because it gets very muddy very quickly. Now, I have my kind of, let's call it a base, a base coat, okay, on. I'm going to put some of this warmer colour down the back here as well, just to kind of tie the mountain together. Just, see, just kind of flicking a little bit through here and there. Uh, okay, I'm not too... That's quite nice. I'm kind of happy enough with that. Let's just soften it a little. Okay, just where it turns. And then I have another small darker kind of a point up here. I'm going to put some darks in as well. So rub my brush on some tissue. Um, let's take some. Cobalt blue, take a little crimson. So plenty of this now, plenty of each, and a hint, I think a touch of black. Now, where is my black? I don't have black on my palette. Let me just get my black for you. I do apologize, but um, I thought I already had black on my palette. I don't, apparently. So I'm putting a little touch of black on there, tiny, tiny amount. Okay, so there's my black. And I'll take a touch of black. So a touch of black, cobalt blue, and a little crimson. Okay, now I'm mixing tiny, tiny, tiny amounts. You see it? It's only a tiny amount. Because there's no point in having tons of paint all over your palette. Now I'm just going to try and create this ridge here. And the dark ridge kind of comes along like that and over like that. Okay, and then I'm going to soften this down very slightly, you see? Pulling the direction of the brush downwards again. And I'm just going to sort of leave it hit and miss, you see? It's kind of dancing on and off of the brush. Now I'm going to darken it up here slightly as well. Okay. All right, um, I might darken up here as well, just a little with that color, maybe adding a touch more blue into it. So I might go up here and just pull a little touch of that down. I'm just kind of wiggling the brush slightly left and right, look. Now I'm gonna take more cobalt blue in that. And I'm going to just start adding a few darks in here as well. You can use your palette knife as well for this if you like, or just a regular small pointy brush. Uh, it's completely up to yourself. I kind of, I like using the palette knife, but I don't like using the palette knife too much because it gives you a kind of a bad habit then of picking up the palette knife just because it's easier. Do you understand? Um, and it is easier. Now, the palette knife is a wonderful tool for creating mountains and all that kind of stuff and snow on mountains, but I think using the palette knife too much, it just gives me a kind of a bad habit. I tend to go and reach for my palette knife a lot more than I should. Does that make sense? Uh, it's nice to kind of use your, your brush every now and again as well. It just it helps you develop your skills with the brush. Now, of course, it's completely up to yourself, yes? But um, do try to kind of limit your palette knife usage if you can. As I said, it's a beautiful tool, but 
using it too much will it kind of makes every painting look exactly the same um, whereas using a brush will give each painting something unique there will be something unique about each painting when you're using the brush now let me just okay and let me just soften that down there just a little soften that right down um, I'm going to start putting in some light blue so you can see you now we have the main kind of structure of the hill and mountain in place so I think what I'll do next now is maybe take a smaller brush and start adding some snow that kind of thing to it so let me get a nice small little pointy brush now so I lose this little number 10 flat and I'm going to mix a very light blue and for a very brave very vibrant snowy color I would use phthalo blue and white and maybe a little crimson okay so phthalo blue lots of white and a little crimson just to warm it slightly because we've lots of warm colors now be very careful with crimson because it's a very rich color so just a little will do okay now with this very bright thick pasty color look lots of paint on my brush i'm going to suggest with side of my brush little little dabs of snow coming down here and there look now i'll take a bit more blue because it's still a little warm for me perhaps even a little bit more so i'm going for a rich a light blue but it's kind of a rich blue at the same time does that make sense now give my brush a, cl a little clean because your brush can tend to get dirty very quickly when mixing on the canvas so it's a good idea to keep cleaning your brush now this is a bit better i like this color a little bit more perhaps a tiniest hint of pink in there tiniest tiniest little hint and uh, let's go up here and add a little of that there and okay let's go along the back and put some of that down the end as well there's a lot of it down the end so i'm just going to kind of flick it around soften it upwards and again look if you want to use a palette knife please do don't feel under any obligation to follow me along using my brushes and all this um, it's your painting please do paint it the way that you'd like to paint okay now a little bit of uh, phthalo blue a little bit of crimson i'm going to darken maybe a bit more crimson i'm going to kind of come down and sort of darken this section here and merge it sort of into this hill just a little bit okay because i want them to kind of feel like it's the same hill a little bit of a darker blue there now we will start adding some bits of snow and things to this with a small brush so let's take a small pointy brush um, i'll go for this little pointy little one here give it a good clean so you can see now we're spending a lot of time on our tutorial a lot of in-depth tutorial uh, let's take some white just i think just crisp white and i'm going to go up here and just put in some of the real crisp whiteness of the snow up there just catching the sunlight and it comes down like that and you can see i'm pulling it down in the very same direction okay and then leave it sort of fizzle and soften away clean the brush again take some more white a little bit just here um little couple of dabs of it you see not too much i'm not going to go overboard with this um perhaps a little bit just there and then i may add a little just to the front of this ridge here just to suggest there's a kind of a turning of the light in the dark just a little ok 
Okay. And a little touch of it up here as well. Soften that down. Okay. How's that? Now, there, okay, I'll go with that, and I'll add another couple of lights here and there along the back. Okay, just to suggest that there is lots of snow as well at the back of the hill, kind of falling downwards. I'll go for a light blue for the back here. And it's just about suggestions, that's all. Now, I'm going to soften that very slightly with a soft brush, okay? Now, there we go. Then I'm going to put some darks in, a couple of darks. There's a couple of nice shadowed areas up there. I'll take some phthalo blue, some crimson, and a touch of black. Tiniest touch, and let's make it nice and warm here now, a bit more crimson in this. I just want to kind of uh, show the ridge a little bit better, okay, just a little. Just kind of want to pick out the ridge just a bit more, all right, a bit more pink. And it then sort of kind of disappears down into this mountain, doesn't it? Okay, you see? And I'll add a couple of darks down around there as well. couple of darks just up around some of these because even though there's a lot of detail in the mountain um, you can create lots of detail without painting lots of detail do you know what I mean you can give the impression of lots of detail without having to paint lots of individual little details does that make sense by just adding a couple of darks here and there. Let's take a bit of black. It's giving you the impression of lots of details. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very sort of a rough brush and I'm going to create some nice mist down at the base of that with some white and some blue. And let's just go little circles like this. Just like that, okay? Now, that will do fine. Now I'm going to continue this side down here. And it's getting lighter, isn't it? I'll use the same brush. Um, it's getting, it goes from a light, a sunlit colour into a dark colour, doesn't it? So look, I put in the dark colour first. So I put in some. Cobalt blue. Little phthalo. Little crimson. And a hint of burnt umber. And I'm going to put that colour in first. Okay. Like so. And you can see I'm working in really thin layers. All right. Really, really thin. Okay. So we have that bottom section in. And I'm going to clean my brush. Just give it a quick dip in and a quick rub on some tissue. Then I'm going to put in a nice lighter shade. I'm going to try some 
cadmium red, um, a little burnt umber, and some Naples yellow. And I'm going to put that colour in here first, okay. Soften it down slightly. So already now we're getting that light hitting the hill. I'm cleaning my brush, take more Naples yellow, take a little touch of crimson. That will give you a nice bright sunlit kind of a colour. Look at that, that's nice, isn't it? Okay. And just dance around here and there. And how's that? Look at that. Nice and simple. Now you can then take a small pointy brush. Let's take some Naples yellow and a hint of white, okay? Little white, very, very bright colour. And let's suggest the sun coming along, catching some of the ridges here and there. So it's all kind of focused then in just one place, just this section of the hill where the light is coming down and catching here and there. Now you could go up a bit as well if you want. Like so. Maybe catching just here and there up on top as well. Okay. Then we have a very dark section down here, don't we? So let's make that nice dark section. Thalo blue, a little black and a little pink. So it gets really dark then down here, doesn't it? And it even goes right across, it kind of cuts across the hill. Then soften that down. Very softly like that. Okay. And then on the bottom section, I'm going to put in a little hint of some dark blue kind of snow. Okay. Just in a dark blue because it's in a dark shade. So the snow won't be white. It'll be a very dark kind of a bluey color. Okay. Just to start to break it up. Just a little, that's all. No, you can rub it in with your fingers as well, look. Now, you may feel it's a little bit too strong. If you feel that's a bit too strong still, I'm just going to take some white and some blue, and I'm going to create some mist, a little mist, just in around here, look. Just a little. Soften it very gently, hardly touching the canvas, look. Little mist there. And perhaps even softening it outwards as well. Okay, so you're softening the edge outwards then to help it sort of disappear. And then pull a little bit of more white into this section here, look. Now this is all dry. All this here is completely dry, so it's fine. You can go over that, bring it across, let it soften in. Nice and gently, look at that, isn't that lovely? Then just with a clean finger, just rub it in. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. And I think that's fantastic. That's a lovely, lovely job that we did, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to soften some of these ones just here, just a little, okay, look. Got to soften them together, just a hint. And put in a couple of darks here and there, and some of these. Just like that, okay? Now, we're pretty much done with that, I would say. I think we'll move on to this one. Try and get this one done, shall we? Let's go on to our bigger brush. And let's make a nice, rich, dark colour. Let's take some. Thalo blue, crimson, 
lots of each, okay? And I think the burnt umber, there's actually quite an amount of burnt umber in this. If you look closely, there's a lot of burnt umber in this. Uh, let's go. Um, okay, a little mound there. Okay, a lot more pink. And a bit more of the brown. Getting really warm now with this. Let's come down. Let's come right on down there. A bit of cadmium red even. And let's go right down. Cutting in front of that nice dark there, look. Bit more pink. I'm just filling it in, okay? That's all. As it turns, it's kind of cooling down slightly. So I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, a bit of cobalt blue, and a hint of white. Okay. Now, I wanna make it warmer than that. That's a bit cool for me. It's a bit on the greeny side. So crimson, little white, and a little cobalt. Maybe a little phthalo. I wanna cool it down there. That's better, isn't it? And around like that. I'm scrubbing it into the canvas, okay? Don't be afraid of it, just scrub it into the canvas right in there. Look, scrub it in. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Now, so we have that one done. Now you'll see, you notice it's sort of almost disappearing. You can just make it a little bit darker around that edge. Take some crimson and some phthalo. And let's just make it a bit stronger so it stands out more. Okay. There we go. Job done. Now, I'm going to make it a lot more purple here. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue with crimson. And I'm going to add that nice rich color to the back end here. Take a bit of crimson, work some crimson into this here, okay. And what I'm gonna do then is I think, firstly, I create some nice lighter sections on the front. So I'll go with, uh, let me see now, let me just look at this. All right, I'm gonna create some of the shadowed area first. So I'll go with some phthalo blue, crimson and a little black. Okay, the black will really help. And I'm just gonna create a ridge, there's a kind of a ridge which comes down like that. Then it disappears down into the, dark, the darks down below disappears. Let's take a little black and I'm going to just darken it slightly. And we have a very dark rich colour here. So I'll take a hint of black, some phthalo blue and more crimson. And I'll create that dark there as well. Very dark. Okay, like so. Now, we have a nice light area as well, don't we? Very bright spot. So from the sunny area, it's kind of casting across onto this as well, isn't it? Let's try and get that done, some of that. Now I'm checking the time on the camera. 50 something minutes we have, that's good. That's very, very good. So let me take, again, a relatively 
clean brush. I get another flat brush now for this because to keep the brushes clean. I have blue on some brushes, yellows on others. So separate your brushes if you can. Let's go with, um, let's try some cadmium red. Some Naples yellow. And we have a kind of a pinkyish tone there. Now let's try that. Let's go like so. Okay, when it gets dirty like that, you see, I'll just give it a rub on the tissue just to keep it clean. Then I'll go back into that color again. Now granted, I have a bit more red in this, but that's fine. And okay, it comes over like that. Okay, clean it again. Let's go up to this top edge up there. You can see quite a bit of it up there. Then we we'll go back into that color. Uh, okay, a little bit there. And it sort of disappears down then, doesn't it? Just take your time, just little touches at a time, okay? Just little bits. Um, okay, let's try some Naples yellow on its own. Okay, little dab, just like that. Then I'm gonna soften some of this together, just a little tad, just a tiny bit here and there. Okay, like so. Now I'm going to take a small brush and create some shape to this. I'm going to go for some burnt umber with a little black. I think the burnt umber might be more forgiving. And I'm just going to create some dark ridge lines just along here and there, look. And perhaps a little up on top. And I'll create a couple around the front here as well because they will have some darks in there as well. So that's some of the darks done. Now I'm going to just put some snow on that. It's not on the photograph but I'd like to put a bit in just a little bit of bright colored snow. All right, just a little, and uh, maybe a little hint of it around here. You see, just little bits even in the shadow. Just to tell you that there is kind of snow up there, high up. And again, it is just an impression. I'll soften some of that with my soft brush, look. Just to take the edges off some of those. Then I'll go with some nice bright white here and there, just like that, look. Again, I know it's not on the photograph, but I think it's nice just to put a hint of it in. Just a hint here and there. And it'll go from a very bright white hair to a kind of a dullish blue kind of a colour underneath in the shadow, you see? Just a little dull blue. Then I'm going to soften that down very gently. Now I'll soften some of this up here as well, look. Next I want to create the impression of lots of kind of um, foliage down the bottom because you can see if you look closely on the photograph it's a very kind of a wooded area okay it's like thick overgrowth so with a little of the blue and the pink okay let me just try this very dry brush just a little bit i'm going to just kind of dab with the tip of my brush to create a very rough textured kind of a surface look and that will just give you the impression of trees and 
bushes. Just a little impression anyhow, okay? Perhaps a touch of white in there. And even on the back end as well, you can put a couple. Look. I think it does help. Doesn't it? Now how's that? Not bad though, is it? And the next thing I might do, it's not on the photograph, but I think it might be nice, if we take a little misty colour, some white and some phthalo blue, let's give it a little mist down at the bottom here. I think since we have so much mist in the rest of the painting, it might be a shame not to put it over here as well, just so that everything kind of merges together just a little, okay? Just on the back there. And then I'll take my soft brush, again, my wife's makeup brush. I'm just going to soften some of it together. Look very gently. Okay. Now, how is that? Look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? And there we are. Okay, I'm going to zoom back now. I don't think I need to zoom back, do I? Let me just see if I can focus the camera. There we are now. Let's peel off this tape and see what we have so far. And there we go, my friends. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Lovely clean line. Now, we could start putting some of the water in if you wish um what time have i got here now 50 minutes 37 hmm i think i may put some of the reflection in what do you think okay tell me what you think yes okay let me get some more paints on my can on my palette i don't have much paint left so i'm going to take some that's not that's not taylor that's prussian blue i have two different types of blue i have prussian and thalo and there's a big difference between the two. Well, not a huge difference, but there's a little bit of a difference between the two. Um, Perusian blue is more kind of on the greeny side of blue, so more an earthy landscape kind of ultramarine sort of a colour. Um, Perusian blue is more... Um, oh, sorry, thalo blue is more of a blue, rich, rich, bluey blue. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Right. Here are my colours. I'm going to take my large stubby brush. Let's get some of the reflections in. Perhaps even, we, we could even work on this side just for now. How about that? Yes? Let me bring the camera down slightly. Let's tilt it down very, very slightly. Now to be careful with this because it's very sensitive. There. Okay? Now, let's just concentrate on this. So it's just mirroring, effectively just painting what's above, down below, okay? Um, you can use, I suppose, normally, it, reflections would be slightly darker in the water, but in this instance, they are almost pretty much the same, aren't they? Let's mix a dark color for this. I'll take some Prussian blue, a nice bit of turpentine in your brush, okay? Prussian blue, some crimson, nice bit of crimson, could even try that. Now it's still a bit blue, I think. A bit more crimson, a little more turpentine. Uh, I keep it warmer just to begin with, okay? I'm gonna leave a little line just so I can see what they what they both meet, okay? Now I'm going to bring it down like this. It needs to be warmer, a bit more crimson. And I'm just going to go left to right, left to right, like this, okay? Left to right, left to right. If you find it kind of dry like that, you see the way it's kind of like that? Add a tiny touch of turpentine to your mix. It will help, I promise, look. It really does. And then let's kind of come up 
Um, there's grass coming through here, so it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect. Let's just bring it down like that, look. As it comes across now, it's getting lighter, isn't it? So let's take some cobalt and some white. Okay. A little turpentine. I do hope you can kind of see the palette as well, because I want, you know, I really do want to give you a nice tutorial. I don't want you to miss out on mixing or any of that. And it's lightening across here. You can see on the reference photograph, it's just this light color all the way across. Soften that in just a little bit there. Now, clean the brush quickly. I'm gonna just take some white and a little cobalt blue. White and cobalt blue. And it's kind of softening in up here. Okay, I won't go any further than that now, all right? I'm gonna leave it at that. Next, I'm going to put in some of the lights, okay? Now, you could maybe even do some of this one as well, actually, come to think of it, using that lighter color. Let me see now. Take some crimson, phthalo blue. We'll go with a plum kind of a color first, look. And soften that up just a little. I won't go all the way. We need a spot here for our lighter color, yes? So that is much easier for us to mix it there then. And we come back up here. I'm just kind of guessing roughly, okay? You don't have to be perfect, just have a good guess. Uh, this is covered with grasses and stuff anyway, so you don't have to be too fussy with all of this, okay? Now, I'm gonna clean that brush, give it a really good clean on some tissue. Um, I am going to put in some of that lighter color. I'm gonna go with some Naples yellow some cadmium red. I'll go with that red kind of a color first. So it's a bit, yeah, that's nice, I like that. Okay, how's this looking? Soften that together like so. Now you notice I'm going left and right, but I will be pulling all of this down very gently in a moment, okay? I'm just getting all my kind of lights and darks in first. Then I will kind of start pulling it all down with my soft blender brush. Now I'm taking some more crimson and uh, some more cadmium red and Naples yellow. And for this one here, I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of that through, just like that. Okay. A little bit more. Naples yellow. Perhaps even Naples yellow and crimson. Give us a nice rich colour. Okay. We'll add a bit of that colour to this area here. All right, let's take a bit of white and a bit of Naples yellow and a little hint of crimson. Gives us a very bright pink. Okay, like so. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is pull all of this down. All right, I'm gonna pull everything down very lightly. I'll start, I think, with the lighter shade over here. Okay, I'm gonna pull that downwards. Vertical brush strokes, straight down, look. Then go up to your dark. And pull that all the way straight down. And pulling that down will give you the effect, the effect of the, rip, the reflect, reflections in the water because everything is being stretched. Understand? Now I hope that looks alright from where you are 
because I'm looking at this from an angle. You see, I'm painting from an angle. So my head is not in the shot like this. Okay, do you understand what I mean? So I hope it's okay. I'm gonna take a bit more of that color there, that whitey color. Let's try a bit of white. Let's just take a bit of white with a bit of pink and let's just roughly pull that down like that, look. Very gently. Then I'll soften it upwards into the hill, downwards as well into the reflection. Now you can, if you wish, go sideways very gently. That gives more movement in the water. And something I forgot then was up here, well, I didn't forget, but I was planning to do it, a little bit of mist. So I'll take a little bit of white, touch of phthalo blue, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a mist up here in the reflection, do you understand? Round and round we go. So I put that down then, and I'm going to pull this down. And I'll soften it where it meets the hill, you see? It, I'm not worried about this because I'm going to take my palette knife then, okay? My straight edged palette knife, if I can find it around here somewhere. Hmm, where did I put it? Where did I put my palette knife? That's always the way, isn't it? The one you need is never there. I have lots of these ones, but the one I need is my flat-edged palette knife, which I cannot seem to find. Okay, so, ah, there we go. I'm gonna take some white and a little of that blue there. So we have a very whitey blue there, okay? And I'm just going to wet a little roll of this on my palette knife. Just a tiny roll of it, you see it? Let me... Oh yeah, there it is. No. It's going to go along very sharply across here with some of this, okay? Very gently. And then add one or two little ripples through your reflection look now don't go crazy with this okay you can very easily ruin it i have ruined many paintings by putting loads and loads of these little ripples through the painting and you would be tempted to keep going but honestly just one or two is all you need okay well i have more than one or two but you know what i mean just a few is all you need and i think that's enough I shall leave, leave well alone. Is that what they say? Okay, everyone, I think that's part two done. Let me turn the camera so you can see me as well in the shot there. Now, what do we think about that? I think that's quite nice, isn't it? Just a little more on the cameras. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with part three. I'm eager to get this finished. I think this is going to be lovely. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Just little tutorials on creating mountains and mist and that kind of thing, okay? And distance. And using lots of blue as well to create lots of distance in your painting. Um, turn here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your help. Um, I've started Zoom lessons, okay? Uh, I have a list of names. I'll contact you. But I put it on my page as well, my Facebook page, uh, specific times. I will probably do weekends because I know a lot of you are working during the week. So it'll be weekends, okay? Um, one or two classes at the weekend. We'll see how we go. Keep in touch. Comment down below if you like it. Uh, if you don't like it, I don't mind. Subscribe. Uh, I'll see you very soon. Happy painting and God bless you all. See you later.